is a comfort to my soul. Your word is the truth that sets me free. Well, hi there, and welcome once again to Bible Talks Bible Studies as we continue on in our look at the letter of James. Uh, this is our, our third session in that letter. A blessed letter it is indeed. And we pray that it encourages you. It certainly is encouraging me. To us, us too. It, to us too. Because it is the Word of God. And the Word of God always accomplishes God's purpose. All right? So before we start, let me do this. Father, I just pray, Lord God, that you would be in control of everything that goes on here, of every word that's spoken, Lord God. That not only would you touch my mouth, but you would touch the ears of everybody that tunes in and listens to this, Lord God. Because the idea is, the plan is, the goal is that we would all grow in you, become more mature because of your word, the teaching of your word, Lord God. Oh, so we just praise you and thank you for this opportunity and ask for your hand upon it and that your spirit would be present within us as we do this, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. So, Amen. on behalf of Alice and myself and everybody involved in the ministry of Bible Talk, we do want to greet you in the wonderful, the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll be picking up in the study of James in the first chapter, still in the first chapter, in the 18th verse, uh, which is where we left off. We left off just going into the 18th verse. So we have the Bibles ready, and I, I'm sorry, you were No, I didn't, I didn't. good work, baby. <laughs> it's, yes, it's a very good idea to bring a Bible to a Bible study, <laughs> and you also may want to have a notepad and be able to jot down anything that strikes your fancy, anything you want to look up later, anything that you want to question, and you are willing, you are able to question. I said this many, many times, and I'll say it one more time. Don't trust me. Test me. Hallelujah. Because yes. you're, you are to test all things and hold fast that which is good. Test the spirits. Many false prophets are going abroad. Make sure that everything that you hear, whether it's me or anybody else, that you're testing it against the word of God. That'll keep you safe. I promise you. All right. So as I said, we're in verse 18 of the first chapter of James. And uh, I'll, I'll start off by reading that. Okay. Good idea. Good idea. In the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. In the exercise of his will, this is not about what we want. This is always about what God wants, all right? Uh, you know, it says in Philippians that he is at work both to will and to work his good pleasure. So that's our desire, is that, that God is in control and he is working his will, all right? But this brings up a, a, a question, not an age-old question, but certainly a question that has bounced around the church for many hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's known as Calvinism versus Arm, Arminianism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't know that how, much you're, how familiar you are with them or how familiar you need to be, but you should know that there are two fairly distinct schools of thought, theologically, in the church today among Bible-believing Christians, mm -hmm. right? Now, remember it says that the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Second Peter 3, 4. God desires that we all be saved. That is his desire. All right? That is his will. The simple fact of the matter is everything gives evidence that's not going to be the case because he has given us free, free will yes. and a choice. <clears throat> but that's where Calvinism versus Arminianism comes into a, a certain amount of clash. Calvinism, you know, you can point to the road, Paul on the road to Damascus, all right? It says, but the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel, for I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. That's, that's God speaking, that's Jesus actually, mm -hmm. speaking about the apostle Paul. So he's saying, God has chosen him. Jesus has chosen him. Well, we've all been chosen. So does that mean that we had no part in it, that we had no, that our will didn't matter, that we didn't have to say yes, Lord? Um, Paul also said in 1 Corinthians 9, 16, For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for I am under compulsion. 
For woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. He's under compulsion. He's saying he doesn't have any free will about preaching the gospel. Right. That's true because he had surrendered his free will, right? He'd given it back yes. to God. Arminianism is kind of like, you know, you, you can point to the, the rich young ruler, right? In the Gospel of Mark, mm -hmm. he comes to Jesus and he says, you know, I want to follow you. And, and Jesus said, well, first of all, go sell all you have, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. And he chose not to. Right. That was his choice, all right? Mm -hmm. But he was given a clear choice by Jesus. And how many places in Scripture does it talk about that choice? That we have the people and the people of God were coming out, being the people of God for the first time, coming out of Egypt mm -hmm. and going into the land. You know, Joshua said to them, choose you this day. This is he's speaking to the people of God. He says, choose you this day who you will serve. Mm -hmm. OK, so, yes, there is a choice. The thing is, your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're saved from the beginning, from the foundations of the world. Right. <clears throat> But you still have a choice. Absolutely. And every day you are faced and confronted with a choice. Don't don't let this get to be a real problem, all right? And I've seen that. I mean, two of my two brothers of mine, precious, 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 precious brothers, mm -hmm. who I consider both of them to be amazingly, amazingly sound in their theology and and their scriptural knowledge. I mean, we've been friends for a long time. And when we were over in England last year, we went to visit with one, two of us, one from Manchester and uh, us from the United States of America. We went to visit another brother in Utoxeter. And these are two absolutely dear brothers who are so on fire for God. I mean, truly, truly on fire for God. Their lives have been totally and completely given over to the service of the yes. Lord, both of them. So the three of us are there with our with our lovely brides, by the way. And they got into a discussion about this very thing. Do you have a choice? Or has God, you know, has God just chosen you and that's the end of that? Predestined. Predestined. And the, the interesting thing was they could not come to an agreement on that. And I felt so bad because I love them both. And it's like it's the rarest thing in the world to see them not be uh, in agreement. Mm -hmm. All right. The point is, I believe that there's a there's a line somewhere in between. I know that God was calling me all through my life. I mean, from the time that I left my mother, from the time I was in my mother's womb, yes, and, until 33 years later, it was my 33rd birthday that I that He confronted me in such a powerful, powerful way, and I said, "Yes, Lord, I, I accepted that gift of salvation." Was it my choice? Well, he was hammering on me for 33 years. I mean, that doesn't matter. Just here's what matters, that you have chosen to surrender your will to God right now. Okay? Believe that God wants everybody saved and believe, because Scripture makes it evident, that not everybody is going to go. And he already knows whose names are in the Lamb's Book yes. So, I mean, it would, it would seem logically to be some kind of contradiction that he desires everybody to be saved, knowing that some will not, all right? right? But it's not a contradiction. I, I would say something very, very important. Don't you be concerned. Don't you be concerned about the decision that that person makes. Be first and foremost, be concerned about the decisions that you make. The decision that you make today, when you woke up this morning, did you rejoice in the Lord this morning when you woke up? Did you say, I thank you, Lord. This is a day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Have you chosen to serve God today? That's the question you need to ask yourself day by day by day. All right? But when you're saved, you are saved, as it says here, by the word of truth. Peter wrote, and he said, for you have been born again, not of sea, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God, 1 Peter 1.23. It's the word that God uses to draw us to him, okay. which is why it's so important that we share the word with people. All right? And that's where the power is. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
we have to have the boldness. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I was doing a little teaching to our fellowship group last night. I was saying, and, and think about this, how rare it is to actually hear the gospel. Mm-hmm. Because the gospel is not, well, Jesus loves you and he wants you to this or rich or, you know. The gospel is, first of all, repent. Yes. You know, the good news, gospel is good news. If you don't, if you don't, if there's no bad news, you don't need good news. And the bad news is that we are all sinners. We're born into this world with a stain of sin on us. The good news is that Jesus Christ has made a way for us to come right to the Father. That way was his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. So thank God. That's the good news. The good news. How much, but how much are you hearing about the word of the cross? How much are you hearing about the fear of God? I'm not talking about... The good news is not God wants you rich. The good news is, oh, God wants to give you a new car. The good news is not, oh, God wants you. The good news is that God has given you eternal life. That's the good news. There's That's a price. A gift. Yeah. It's a gift. And it's, it's a free gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But it's the most expensive gift that ever was made in the world because it cost Jesus Christ yes. his life on that cross. Mm-hmm. Okay. But God will have his way. You know, this is really, get this straight and through and into your head. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, God says, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the, to the eater, so my word, which goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Isaiah 55, 9 to 11. God is able and God is at work. God is at work in your life and my life. If you happen to be coming across this video and you're not, if you don't have a right relationship with God, if you have not surrendered your life to God, I'm telling you, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to do it. Say, yes, Lord. But you see, It's about the word, and it's about the sacrifice of Jesus. It's not about pretty buildings. It's not about making ourselves and our churches, our music, more attractive to men. I mean, that's not what it is. That seems to be the plan in most of the church today. You know, let's make this as attractive as possible to draw people in. That's exactly the opposite of God's plan. He made that clear when he spoke to the prophet Isaiah and said, this is talking about Jesus. He said, for he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of parched ground. And he has no stately form of majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. Isaiah 53, 2. You know what? It has to be the Spirit of God that draws you. It has to be the Father drawing you. Remember, the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. So we would be like the first fruits. Hallelujah. We are. Praise God. But I want to get into verses 19 and 20 now, right? So look at your Bible and read along with me here. It says, Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Well, that's that's very nice, and praise God it is. But I want you to read something. I want you to be with me as I read you something else from 1 Corinthians Chapter 13, from Paul, all right? Just give me a second to turn to it. First Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to read from verse 11. Now, bear, them, you know, bear in mind what I just read, okay? We have to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. But Paul wrote this, and pay attention now, okay? He said, when I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. Do you see what's going on here? When he, he said when he was a child, he used to speak, think, and reason. Do you notice that he was putting thinking, he was putting speaking ahead of thinking? Have you ever met anybody who seems to speak before they think? Mm -hmm. 
That's common for mankind. All right, that's the opposite of God's plan. Before you speak, you have to hear. Be quick to hear. Now, this is not a little thing. This is, and you may want to mark this down, a gigantic thing. And why is it a gigantic thing? Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So if you have to be quick to hear, you've got to be quick to hear God, because that builds faith in you. And then you will do what you're doing. You'll be speaking and acting and reasoning in faith. And it says anything not done in faith is sin. sin. So if you're, if you're speaking before you thought, if you are speaking before you have heard from God, I am telling you, you are sinning. No, I'm not telling you. The, the Word of God is telling you that. So we have to develop the habit of take a deep breath, slow down, and, and have a conversation with God. Make sure you hear from God before you start to speak so that you know what you're speaking lines up with what God says. All right? We're too quick to speak our opinions. Our opinions. Our opinions have no value. Mm -hmm. well, we just got through saying, okay, it's about the Word of God. Right. God's Word accomplishes what He wants to accomplish. He says it right. So you have to you have to be quick to listen. But you you know you really need to, especially in this day and age, you have to be quick to be discern what you are choosing to listen to. Yes. Who you are cho choosing to listen to. You know, Jesus Christ said, be careful what you listen to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the devil is out there, and he is the minister of propaganda for, for the pits of hell. And he's speaking loud and clear all the time. Yes. And, you know, he uses more channels than, than God does, because God only has one. God speaks through his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We need to be really, really careful in this time. Now, you know, as, as we're recording this now, we have this whole pandemic of the COVID throughout yeah. the world throughout the world and it is a worldwide yes. pandemic we have economic crisis throughout the world yes we have political crisis throughout the world yes. i mean i i don't think america is the only place where there are riots going on constantly now right but before you speak about those things you had better hear from god what he wants to say about those things mm -hmm. Because I hear far, far too many Christians speaking their mind about this situation. And your mind, you know what? Well, the whole head is sick. That's okay. That's what the word says. And it's not what you believe in your mind, and not what you've been convinced of in your mind. It says what the heart man believes. That's what it says in Romans, right? Yes. So you need to hear from God, and you need to believe what you hear from God, regardless of what the world is saying, regardless of the world. Satan is the God of this world. God is in charge. And nothing's getting by God, by the way. No. But I'm hearing so many Christians talking about their conspiracy theories and their this and their that. Don't speak a word unless you have heard it from God. Be slow to speak. You have to be quick to listen. You have to be quick to hear. Put that first. God is a God of good order. The, the order of these things matter. So make sure that you have heard from God before you speak of God. Be slow to anger. But remember what Paul said. The first thing, his order from this, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. So his order is, I used to speak, then I'd think, then I'd reason. Mm -hmm. That is not good order. Yeah. We Christians childish. have to get in the habit of slowing down and making sure that we are connecting with the Holy Spirit, hearing from God what we should speak. And then we need to be bold and speak what he has, what he has spoken. Because the world needs to hear what God has to say. I mean, I see the world wrapped up in, I, did you hear what it said? they said on BBC today? Did you hear what they said on CNN? Did you hear what they said on Fox News? I don't care what they said. I care what God says. Because he's the only one that actually knows what's going on. Everything else is conjecture and speculation. Because he is in control. 
I would, I would say, I mean, uh, this COVID thing has been going on for quite a number of months now. And it wasn't uh, too long ago, maybe two months ago or so, that there was a movement going on here in the United States and it said it's over. It's over, right? You know, open everything up right? because because there were uh, politicians were more concerned with the economy than they were with the people's lives. I, I, have, to, I have to say that. I wrote on our, the front page of our Bible Talk website, BibleTalk.com, and I quoted an old Yankee baseball player who said, it ain't over till it's over. Mm -hmm. And now there has been a massive, massive resurgence of the COVID. Nobody knows, none of the experts out there know what's going on, but I promise you, God knows exactly what's going on. And as Jesus said to Pontius Pilate, you have no authority unless my Father in heaven gave it to you. God in heaven is in control of what's going on. And he is working, as, as it says in Philippians, he is working both for his will and his good pleasure. What's going on is God's will and God's pleasure for his purpose. And yes, he has a purpose in all of this. You don't hear much about the judgment of God in this day and age. It's all in preparation for his coming. That's what it's all in preparation for. And I believe that his coming is not far off. I mean, I can't tell you that it'll be a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, but I can tell you this with absolute assurance. It's closer today than it was yesterday. Yes. And that's the truth. Amen. And whenever it is, you better be prepared for it. You better be prepared for his coming. Or maybe, you know, before his coming, maybe you'll be going. But either way, you better be prepared. And the way you respond to these things is by having heard from him, then you reason what God wants and get in line with that. God doesn't need your partnership in figuring out how he should run things. But we need to be in agreement with what he has chosen in his way. Of it. His ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. Do you ever hear that verse? Absolutely. Well, his ways are still higher than our ways, and he is working his way right now. He is working both his will and his pleasure right now. We can't even conceive or think of his ways. No. There's a reason here, too, by the way, that this is all connected. Let's, let me read this really quickly one more time. Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Have you not noticed, I don't know where you are, the anger that is going on? The protests, I mean, here in the United States of America, the country has been literally ripped apart by the anger of man. Protests, anger, it doesn't accomplish the righteousness of God. Not any time in any way. And you need to remember that when you're confronted with any kind of situation. Your anger is not the answer. There is such a thing as the anger of God. A righteous anger. The right, which is a righteous anger. Yeah. But that's his anger. It's his anger. It's his anger to deal with. I mean, he's the one that does it. Well, how does, what's a righteous anger? I'll tell you, a righteous anger means that you have, it's not anything about you. Right. Why did Jesus, I mean, did Jesus ever exhibit anger? What do you think it was when he went into the temple and whipped the, and overturned the money, the, the tables of the money changers? Mm -hmm. Don't you know that that was righteous anger? He wasn't doing it because it was done to him. They were doing it to his father. And his father's temple, right? If you get angry because of something that's being done to you, there's a God has a plan. It's called repent. Repent. I mean, have you ever read the Sermon on the Mount? And the Sermon on the Mount talks about how should you deal with people that harm, harm you? How should you deal with your enemies? God, listen, God is in control and God will take care of it. Have you never read in Romans chapter 12? He says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I shall repay. But what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to love our enemies. We're supposed to forgive. It says, if your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. That's God's plan for our lives. Now, if you've not heard that, if you've not been quick to hear that from God, then you're not behaving properly. You're not behaving, no, right? You're not behaving righteously. And it should be your great desire to behave righteously. And the battle is the Lord's. He goes forth. 
And if the battle is the Lord's, the victory will be the Lord's. And all we're, and what we're supposed to be doing is cheering him on, praising him and thanking him. You know, because it says in Ephesians, Paul wrote in Ephesians, it said, be angry and yet do not sin. Yeah. So it's possible to be angry and yet not sin. Because it's not about your response to something that's been done to you. Okay? I, I'm sure that if I saw somebody doing something to somebody else uh, that was very, very evil, I might step in. You know? Fine. You have? I have indeed, yes. So, it's not a righteous anger if you get if you get angry because of something that's been done to you. And but remember, it says the anger of man does not accomplish, does not achieve the righteousness of God. It's not it's not going to make God's plan happen when you get angry. So I'm going to go on. In verse 21, it says, "Therefore." putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness. In humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. Putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness. Is there anything in you that remains of wickedness? <laughs> or have you been perfected yet? It should be our desire to be perfect. That's, a, you know, that's the command of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. Be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Our prayer as David's was... Creating us a clean heart. A clean heart. It should be a daily prayer. It has to be a daily prayer. Because, you know what? There's still wickedness in our lives. Absolutely. When, when the perfect comes, the imperfect will be put off. But that hasn't happened yet in our lives. We haven't surrendered all. I, I, I promise you that it's God's desire that you be a little more perfect today than you were yesterday. It's called growing in the Lord. And that, you know, that we talking about Paul, he said, when I was a child, I used to do this. We need to grow up in the Lord. We need to mature. We need to be mature. You know, Hebrews 5, 14 says that the solid food of the word is for the mature, who because of practice discern between good and evil. Have their senses trained. Have their senses trained to discern between good and evil. You should be able to recognize evil. Not what you consider bad. But what God says is not right. So we have an obligation to grow in the Lord. We have an obligation to be, you know, there's no place in the Bible. I, God doesn't ask you to be good. No. Jesus said no man's good. But he does tell you to be holy. That's right. There's a difference between just being good and being holy. Being holy is that, that difference. Set apart. Mm -hmm. Set aside put aside by God to bring forth his glory, to show forth his glory. That's holiness. You have the power in you to live a holy life. It's called the Holy Spirit. I pray that you have the Holy Spirit because if you've been born again, you know, you, you should have had that baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's not about you going out and doing, it's a, doing miracles. The greatest miracle you can do is to, to be controlled in yourself mm -hmm. and to do, follow the Word of God, do the Word of God. Mm -hmm. What a great miracle that is. Not that there's anything wrong with you guys. Mm -hmm. But the power of God gives you the power to overcome your flesh. You know, I know one of the great, the great command of God is deny yourself. You come, you, you come into the, the children of God, the people of God. Now you have to learn to die to yourself, to deny yourself. That, my friend, takes power. We can't do it. It takes discipline. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Mm -hmm. When you surrender. And when you do that, then you will be able to put aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness. In humility, receiving the word that was implanted, which is able to save your souls. Humility. Humility is the opposite of pride. Pride is the gateway to all sin. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, In the perilous last days, in, in the last days, perilous times would come. And the first thing he said is, men will be lovers of self. It's that pride that opens the door to all of the sins that follow that. Jesus Christ, the Lord of lords, the King of glory, humbled himself. That's what it says in Philippians chapter 2. He humbled himself even to the point of death, death on a cross. We need to be willing to die to ourselves, to give all, all for the glory of God. Well, that was real quick. Listen, I, I pray that you just 
consider some of the things that you've heard here today. Just, just think about it. Have, more than think about it, have a conversation with the Lord. Hear from the Lord. Before you think, listen. So go talk to the Lord. And if you have any questions about this, go ask the Lord. Let him speak to you. Because when you hear from him, then you will be in a position for you to go speak to others. Starting with yourself. You can speak to yourself, you know. So, Father, I just praise you and thank you that you are the answer. You are holiness in perfected, per absolutely perfected. Lord, I pray that you would perfect us, that you would continue to work on us, to mold us and shape us, to form us into that godly image of your Son, Christ Jesus, which is the promise, the great promise that you have made to us. That because you foreknew us, because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you would conform us into the image of your Son, Christ Jesus. Our desire is to be like Jesus. Yes. So we praise you and thank you, Father, for that great gift. Train us, Lord. Yes, we were little children. And yes, Lord, we, we may still at times act like little children. Bring us to that place of maturity, Lord God, where we are listening to you before we do anything at all so that everything that we do might be done in faith. And I pray that, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, well, Jesus. God bless you. I thank you for being with us. Write to us at office at BibleTalk.com with any questions or comments you might have. And and by the way, you may you want to just let us know where you're watching from. And, you know, if you have any questions or comments, let us know. Amen. So we pray for you. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we'll see you next time. Same place, same station, same Jesus Christ who is unchanging. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.